Hi there. I've recently made a couple of videos looking at how to remove and replace piston rings from the pistons in our model engines. Now the first video I did was looking at the Dykes piston ring and this is setting a, uh, a groove around the very top of the piston. Now the second video I did was looking at a more conventional piston ring where the piston ring was set in a groove down from the top of the piston. A little bit trickier but still fairly easy if you just take it easy. Now both of these videos had pistons from a modern ported engine which has got a flat top on it. It can get a little bit trickier when you start to look at some of our older engines which have got, haven't got porting, they've got simple cross flow and they have a baffle on top of the piston. And that gets trickier because you have to start and finish in the right place with the piston ring if that baffle's not going to cause a problem. Now, I've got this lovely old Weber Silverline made in Germany as the, the early uh, Webers were and the Silverlines were only ever made in, in, in Germany whereas some of the later ones, the, uh, the speeds, were made in Austria. Now this is a 60 size engine, 10cc and it's got a cross flow piston with a baffle. Now I'm going to strip this down and I'll show you the piston and I'll show you how to safely get that ring on and off without any problems. Right, we have our piston removed here and as you can see there's a, a, a baffle on top of the piston which just deflects the inlet gases up into the top of the chamber and the exhaust gases out through the port here and uh, prevents those kind of mixing. Now, the ring itself is a conventional ring so it is set down from the top of the the piston, not like in the dikes where it's set around the very very top and it's not a pegged ring so it'll rotate freely. You often get a, a, a pegged ring in some engines where the, it stops the ring from rotating so that the join, the gap in the ring doesn't rotate round and get caught in the either the inlet port or the exhaust port. Where you've got them like this where they're not pegged it's because the exhaust port and inlet port have extra bars to prevent the ring getting caught. Now, to remove this ring it's essentially the same as we would do with a conventional ring but the important thing that we need to do here is start in the correct location. Now on this we can see we've got the gap in the ring just here. Now if we turn that over and we start to remove the ring this way this is going to cause us problems here with this baffle because as the ring starts to come off and slide over this will stop and stop the, the, the ring moving over as it should so and, and we'll have to bend it more than we should do and it will probably break so what we need to do is we need to remove that gap around to the start of the baffle on this side. So here we have our piston, I've got the baffle and the gap in the ring is here and we are going to start to take it off around that way and I will just show you how I'm going to do that now. So hopefully this shows up, I'm going to, we've got the gap in the ring there, I'm going to put my thumb onto that to hold that secure, I'm going to put my other finger here just to push out this side of the ring and you can just see it bowing out there now with that finger pushing on there and the simple trick is to put our nail in and just to lift that up a little bit ease that off around oops let me just start again there we go and we just lift that up and over on to the top of the ring and as we did before with a conventional ring still holding this tight we can just move that around and now you can see that has gone on top of there now this is the trick where the baffle uh, will cause problems if we have the ring started in the wrong place now we can just move that around and you see 
how that just slid off there, it's still hooked in here, it just slid off there. Now if the baffle had been here, that wouldn't have been able to, uh, to move over like that. So now we just need to gently take that out of the slot and lift it up. And there we go, that's how you take it off. It's the positioning of the baffle and where you start that is the most important. And to put it on is exactly the same technique and I'll show you how to do that now. So we need to start more or less the reverse of how we took it off. So we will put the, the ring just into the groove there at the start of the baffle. We will hold that with our thumb and then we will just work it around, open it up a little bit and that should just go around. Just move that around a little bit. Now I don't want this to just snap down and slide hopefully this will show up. I don't want the end of that ring there to just snap down and slide into the groove. I want to lift it because if I snap it down then it will scratch the piston and there that's just gone back in there. Hopefully that shows up. Um, it's a bit difficult perhaps with the dark colour but uh, of the, the carbon on top of this piston but that's how you take off and put on a, uh, a conventional piston ring where you've got the added difficulty of the baffle. It's all down to where you start. So I hope that was ho helpful, hope you found that useful and um, thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe, leave me a comment, leave me a like and uh, let me know what you think.